Hillary has been lengthening her excuses as to why uh, she lost the election. She didn't really lose the election. It was stolen from her uh, by, I think it's up to 24 different excuses she has now. Number 24 is content farms in Macedonia. And uh, as I said, uh, my grandfather was a uh, Macedonian content farmer. And uh, we often think about, you know, gathering on the porch and recalling the old days on the Macedonian con- I never thought, he never thought that the old content farmers he left behind in Macedonia would one day steal the U.S. presidential election. They are gnarled, hard-working Macedonian peasants. And the way they were able to reach out and, uh, Presidential the elections election in Macedonia are heating up, with the first round being less than a week away, scheduled for Sunday, April 21. Who will win, place, and show? Will the Greeks hover over the elections like some creepy Santa Claus, looking to see who is naughty and who is nice? Or, in Macedonia's case, who says north and who says never? It's always and only Macedonia. During the pre-election rally in Trobishti, the malfunction in Stevo Penderovsky's shock collar resulted in the presidential candidate using the word Macedonia instead of North Macedonia on three occasions. The Greek agents in attendance were able to replace the device, which sends a brief jolt of electric current through the candidate whenever the standalone word Macedonia is recognized in his speech without being preceded by the word North in time for the rally in the neighboring Samokov, so a bigger diplomatic incident was avoided. All that and more, plus our farmer's picks on this episode of the Macedonian Content Farmers Podcast. I'm Jason Miko, coming to you from the foot of the Catalina Mountains in Oro Valley, Arizona. And this is Svetan Shulimanov calling in from Skopje, Macedonia. How are you doing, Svetan? Uh, doing fine. Back from work. Breathing well, the, I'm just the getting ready to better. go to work. We're, we're recording this actually on Monday, April 15. Uh, we had a few technical di- difficulties yesterday. Uh, yesterday, of course, was Palm Sunday for most of the Protestant and Catholic world. Next Sunday, the 21st, being Easter for the Catholic and the Protestant world. But in your case, in Macedonia's case, and for the Orthodox world, not only do you have the first round of elections next Sunday, but it's also Palm Sunday. How in the world did... Uh, I almost said Ali Ahmeti. <laughs> How in the world did Talat Jafari... Yeah, same difference. <laughs> exactly. Get away with with scheduling the first round of elections on Palm Sunday in Macedonia. Yeah, in uh, the uh, most of the Christendom it was Palm Sunday yesterday. Uh, in the Orthodox world it was try to find uh, a uh, reliable torrent to download the first episode of Game of Thrones Day. And <laughs> we celebrate Palm Sunday uh, uh, a week later on the 21st, which right. is incidentally the first round of elections in Macedonia, and also my, uh, we call it Imanden, the, the, the day when, when I, uh, you know, we celebrate the religious feasts usually based on, uh, on your first name, and for me, uh, right. Cvetin, uh, Palm Sunday is called the Cvetnici in, uh, uh, in Macedonia, and it's the day when oh. Christ was showered with uh, flower petals in our version and with palm uh, mm-hmm. branches, I guess, in the, in the Protestant and Catholic version uh, while uh, exactly. riding into uh, Jerusalem. So, yeah, we, I'm su- actually supposed to have... I'm, I'm having a, the, the usual uh, family feast uh, on that day and I'm supposed to go vote uh, on the same Sunday. And, uh, well, that, that's a good excuse for me if I decide to boycott the elections. <laughs> but I'm most like... <laughs> But I'm likely, I'm, I'm most likely going to vote, and um, barring some major development in the last few days, uh, well, in the first. Well, time. good, you should. Um, and and before we jump into the, the the presidential elections and an update on what's going on, that it, it does it it does seem somewhat suspicious that that Jaffari schedules the first round of elections on Palm Sunday, and if I recall correctly, the Tirana platform was released on. Christmas Day in Macedonia, Orthodox oh, yeah. Christmas Day. It's yeah. just, it's almost, if I would almost, it almost seems like they're deliberately provoking the Macedonians. Yeah, I mean, if it was uh, on some uh, day important for Albanians, or, or you know, God forbid, um, uh, if they would uh, be asked to have general elections at this time of the year, when most of the Albanian diaspora is not in the country and therefore unavailable to vote, uh, you know, it, there would be hell to pay, but... Uh, uh, you know they can just schedule uh, elections on uh, a major Christian holiday, and no- yeah. nobody bats an eye. Well, be that as it may, yeah, yeah. Well, we have elections next week uh, in Macedonia, so uh, 
we, the, the candidates I see, you know, from following the news, I'm following this from afar, you're there, uh, seem to be doing the, the, the rallies, the meetings, as they call them, uh, all across the country. What, uh, what can you tell our listeners who may not be up to speed on what's going on in terms of the presidential race? What, what's, uh, what's the latest? What's the mood? What's the feeling there? Well, the latest is the uh, final, the major rallies ahead of the uh, first round of voting. Vumara did theirs on Saturday uh, afternoon, and the SDSM had their rally on Sunday. They were both held in Skopje. Vumara held theirs in front of the government building. It was a well-attended, a, a mass event. They had uh, Durlovsky, that was the most notable uh, moment, uh, singing the Macedonian national anthem. Uh, wow, the that's been powerful. Yeah, he nearly escaped being sentenced uh, uh, for a long prison sentence as a terrorist, quote unquote, as I would say, uh, for helping organize the protests against uh, forming the Zayev led government and making all these national concessions. Uh, Durlovsky was uh, rumored for a long time that he's probably the best, the most uh, likely Vumara candidate for a uh, presidential candidate, uh, that his trial was not finished before the nomination process. So, you know, Vumara had the option of nominating a person who could very likely be sentenced uh, for terrorism as their presidential candidate. Ultimately, they decided to go with uh, Gordana Sidanovska. Durlovsky did not throw his hat in the ring. But uh, Saturday afternoon was a major endorsement for Gordana when Durlovsky showed up. And essentially, he was the most uh, uh, important uh, challenger, potential challenger for her, the man who could also stand the most to gain if uh, the elections ended uh, uh, with, uh, without the required turnout and essentially in, in a mistrial, <laughs> in a miselection. So basically he endorsed Gordana with uh, performing the anthem at uh, her rally. Uh, and you know, it was a, it was a positive, it was a powerful uh, event. Next day, SDSM held their rally in front of the uh, European Union embassy in Skopje. Some, you know, <laughs> you know, be, be trying to show the oh. EU ambassador and the other assorted ambassadors their investment uh, into SDSM. Yes. You know, to, what, what they gave their money for. Uh, it was uh, somewhat or even significantly less attended. Uh, basically, a lot of the Skopje people are are not even bothering showing up for either of the rallies. That's a problem yeah. for Vumara, but a huge problem for SDSM, which relies on the free downtown municipalities in Skopje to, you know, Skopje was the only electoral district they actually won in 2016. They lost everywhere, everywhere else. Like in other countries, you know, the left relies on the urban vote. And if they're not showing yeah. up to their rallies, it's a disaster. They had to bus people in from all across the country, particularly, uh, you know, public sector employees who cannot avoid an invitation to show up for an SDSM rally. Both parties, uh, or actually in this case, Vumarad, I think they did it this time because of the terrain. When when the when they would protest in front of the parliament, they would put this like a wire fence uh, to try to prevent the people from dispersing into the large park behind the parliament. So they wanted to have like a more concentrated crowd in front of the parliament and, uh, you know, avoid having gaps in the, uh, in the you know, inevitable post-rally uh, estimates done by drones taking pictures and yeah. recording. So Vumara did not do it this time before because in front of the government it's very difficult to do. They essentially covered the entire boulevard including the large median uh, in the center. So it was a, you know, a solid turnout. Is the SM they made, um, they chose a narrower boulevard without a median. Uh, so they wanted to show their crowd uh, in a in a long uh, rectangle, like el elongated rectangle, so they imagined this would uh, fill the street, uh, you know, in, a, in much you know better with more people. Sure, just it's all op it's all optics. Yeah. Yeah, but they had to use these wire mesh uh, fences around, so they would again prevent their people from uh, crowding out. And then tragedy struck as one uh, of the of the attendees had had a heart attack during the event. <clears throat> And apparently he could not be taken out of the enclosure quickly enough 
and helped quickly enough. So, you know, the, the, the man died tragically. So the first, first responder, oh, wow, the first responders and the paramedics couldn't get to him because of the, the, the mass of the crowd and, yeah, the, yeah. And, and the fences is what you're yeah. saying. I mean, he so, was, I, I, wow. think, I think he was coming from a different, from a smaller city. And, you know, if it was bound to happen, you know, it's better to have it happen in Skopje because of the way, uh, you know, healthcare, public healthcare is so centralized in Macedonia. Uh, often yeah. people die being transported, you know, to Skopje, and not enough time to get them to Skopje yeah. in time for treatment. He was in Skopje, very close to the main clinic, but enclosed in a cramped environment with, uh, you know, ASDSM trying to pack their supporters in a narrow... Uh, and, you know, this is especially bad for Pendarovsky because in 2014, during the elections, he made a big deal about how ASDSM supporters are citizens how they come to the protests out of their own volition. And he would say, and look at Vimera, they're packing their supporters like cattle in uh, trucks and buses and busing them to Skopje. Wow. And, you know, they're giving them a sandwich to attend their protest, uh, their, their rally. You know, they would sell out their political independence and beliefs for a, for a ham sandwich. You know, this he was a very negative statement he made for against Vimera supporters, and uh, you know they were doing the same thing then, and they're especially doing the same thing now, now that their base is disenchanted with them and not showing up on its own propulsion, and you have to drag them into Skopje, put them in an enclosure. There were pictures, obviously, before this tragedy of SDSM supporters munching on sandwiches, uh, you know, uh, which were which were distributed. So uh, it hurts Pendarovsky's image, because, especially because he was so outspoken about this uh, five years ago. Wow, wow, that's, that's, that's tragic. And uh, obviously uh, our, our thoughts and prayers would go out to this mm, gentleman's yep. family, uh, friends, that's, that's sad. But um, it's interesting when you, when you, as you talk about the dynamics here and how the parties, or both parties, the main parties, uh, are trying to... Uh, to rally support and and use uh, uh, the the physical space and the optics and whatnot, and we know, I think, from polling, that it's a very tight race, and mm -hmm. I think we've always known that. But it, it always comes down to a couple of things. Number one, we don't know how the undecideds are going to break. Number two, it depends on you know how many people will, which side can get out their their members to vote. Um, now, I'm I'm just going to say this next from a viewing this from afar. Um, you know, I'm watching some of the rallies uh, on uh, video and and uh, reading the news, of course, and whatnot. And it, it it almost seems to me like the referendum in uh, uh, September of last year that and and one of the problems with with Sudasim and Dewey during that campaign was that they were preaching to the choir. They were they were they had small rallies and they were talking to their own people, the committed, um, and they weren't able to to reach out and persuade people that their course of action was the best. And it just I don't know it just seems to me maybe I'm wrong. Uh, one of the hallmarks being a conservative is being open to correction. Uh, that, that their side, Citizen Dewey, is just is preaching to the choir. Now both sides preach to the choir, of course, but. Just from the size of the rallies and the, it seems like a lack of real um, interest in Stevo Pendorovsky, who I think we should point out again to our, our listeners has run for president before in 2014, I think you mentioned, and lost. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a controversial figure. He's not well liked. Uh, he's not very telegenic, photogenic, no. uh, not very good with, he's not a people person, let's say. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, Gordana, the Vomero candidate, is a law professor. She's in her 60s, I think. Is that uh, correct? Yeah, yeah. mid to late 60s. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. She. Uh, I, what, I'll tell you one thing that endears me to her is that uh, she was encouraged early on in the campaign to to go get a new wardrobe, <laughs> yeah. and she said, "No, this is me. This is who I am. This is the way I'm going to campaign." I like that. That's 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 refreshingly mm -hmm. authentic. Um, and of course, we haven't even talked about the third. There is a third candidate uh, for uh, for president, uh, supported by the Alliance of Albanians and Besa, mm -hmm. uh, Blere Mreka, I believe. Yep. yep. Uh, and any what what do you hear or anything? Do you hear anything about Mr. Reka's uh, candidacy? Well, he's uh, going the usual route for an Albanian candidate like Kimer Salmani did. He would uh, uh, send out um, statements that uh, he's inviting 
Macedonians to vote for him as well. And then inevitably some journalists will, will go out and say, uh, you know, point out to some statement by Reka in the Macedonian language media or Macedonian language debate, uh, saying that, well, you know, the Prespa Treaty was a difficult pill to swallow. So, you know, he's nominally, you could even perceive him as a even more uh, sympathetic to Macedonian angst on national issues, on this loss of sovereignty than Pendarovsky, which is noticeable for an Albanian candidate. So somebody would come out and, uh, you know, uh, say, well, is this the time when Macedonians will vote for an Albanian candidate, uh, etc. But this inevitably then peters out as election progresses when some statement he would make to an Albanian media outlet comes out in focus. So far he has done, he hasn't done this. But, you know, it's it's inevitable. It, it might not even happen before the uh, first round of elections after which he'll be out because he's not seen as uh, much of a, um, you know, uh, much of a candidate, uh, you know, a competitive candidate. Imer Salmani was considered a competitive candidate for an Albanian in the 2009 elections. But, uh, you know, he was making the same statements, um, a same uh, angle. But then... Afterwards, he was reportedly uh, went off the deep end in uh, political Islam issues. Then he he rolled back. But you know, every Albanian candidate for this uh, uh, for this role inevitably goes to this stage. Um, he, uh, Rika noticeably comp- his slogan is uh, "I'm a Republican." He is uh, t- trying to evoke the mantle of Republicanism. I don't know if this is some kind of... Uh, Republican small R, not, not, uh, not the Republican Party. I think they're trying to make some kind of like an outreach to American Republicanism, you know, because Albanians always try to show off uh, uh, American uh, political connections they have. But for Rika, this is also a way to, sh- oh, to avoid I I... mentioning the, the word Macedonia, because he says, I'm running for the president of the Republic not not even of North Macedonia or Macedonia. So basically both Pendarovsky and Reka are avoiding using the name of the country. While Gordana is... She's saying Macedonia. She's saying yeah. president of Macedonia and her slogan is justice for Macedonia. Absolutely. Uh, Pendarovsky says uh, together forward and he has the rip of Hillary Clinton uh, uh, arrow pointing to the right uh, as his slogan. But oh. he's avoiding the name Macedonia. <laughs> together forward, well... Well, well, I mean, so together forward is a slogan, and and that's what you know. That's what um, Zoran Zayev said the other week that Stevo Pendrovsky, Stevo Pendrovsky is the anchor that will pull us yeah, forward. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and but he's campaigning for president of the republic. Yeah, of and the republic is of campaigning. Period. He wouldn't mention the the country he is campaigning for. He would just say the republic. And then you know there is Ali Akhmeti who is holding pre-election rallies. Uh, he he nominally supports. Uh, Pendarovsky is his presidential candidate, but he would not mention sure. Pendarovsky during his rallies. He does not talk about him. <laughs> He's not. He does not go to his rallies. Uh, they delegated uh, Buya Rosmani to speak at this SDSM rally in Skopje. They had very few Albanian flags, almost none. Uh, so basically, you know, uh, before the Macedonian crowds, they would say uh, it's a Macedonian candidate running. Uh, in Macedonian, but then in the separate Dewey rallies, you know, they would not discuss Pendarovsky as a candidate, especially as he was a spokesman for the interior ministry. You know, Pendarovsky is a policeman, primarily, and he was spokesman for the interior ministry during the 2001 war. And Albanian politicians easily found statements, you know, normal statements a police spokesman would make during a conflict, an insurgency, he would say, we are going to destroy them, we are going to kill them, you know, the insurgents, etc. And uh, obviously Albanians are now saying, well, look, he said he's going to kill our people, our fighters. They're misconstruing it to mean he's going to kill our civilians. Some civilians were killed, Albanian civilians and Macedonian, of course, during the insurgency. And uh, so Akhmeti is avoiding mentioning the person who was the spokesman of the police, Akhmeti was shooting at, and he's talking about what yes. he will deliver for the Albanians if Pendarovsky is elected, not, uh, you know, uh, praising Pendarovsky uh, as such. Right. 
Interesting. Wow, that's that's some good background there, and I can, I actually forgot about that uh, about Stevo's role back then. Mm. Um, now, speaking of Stevo, I think it is. Inter- I do want to mention this because I saw this quote and it really kind of chapped my hide, so to speak. Um, he mentioned so last. Uh, let's see, what was it? Friday was April twelve, and Petrovsky was quoted as saying. Uh, on this occasion, I would like to express my utmost respect to all participants of the Colored Revolution. Mm. It's referring to uh, the so-called Colorful Revolutionaries 2015-16 that uh, helped to install Zoran Zayev and Ali Ahmeti. So he says, all participants of the Colored Revolution, which contributed to Macedonia, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and I want to join the initiative that began these days to declare this day, April 12, as a day of protest. Mm. Blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Interesting. Now, I think it's worth remembering it's worth pointing out that on April 12, 2012, five ethnic Macedonians were murdered by uh, ethnic Albanians uh, near uh, Simbolkovsko Ezero mm. in what became known as the massacre on the eve of Good Friday. And so that, that's, that is an important date in Macedonian history and Macedonian psyche, and it's painful. Uh, and a lot of it, it, it hasn't been healed. It never will be healed. I don't know where the the uh, the Albanian um, defendants that were accused of that are they in jail now or were they released? Uh, I can't remember if uh, Zaya released them. Uh, three of the direct shooters uh, out of three of them. Uh, two of them fled to Kosovo, and after a while, initially Kosovo claimed that they will extradite them at some point, but they have some minor, you know, gun uh, charge which they have to serve out in Kosovo first, and then. Uh, right now, Kosovo is no longer even pretending to be looking for these people or keeping them in detention. They are free to go. And uh, one right. of the shooters uh, was arrested in Macedonia, as were three or four of their helpers. And all were sentenced to life in prison. But because uh, <clears throat> while Zaev Z- uh, was building up the colored revolution and as he was desperately needing the Albanian vote, uh, his media started uh, spreading conspiracy theories against Vimera over th- these murders. And Zaev would say uh, repeatedly that he has evidence in his wiretaps that throws a different light on the, on the killings. And uh, the families of the four killed teenagers, essentially. They were 19, 18, 19, 20 uh, kids, essentially. And the, the man who was killed... There were five people in, in total, four of them youngsters, and the families would beg Zaev to give them the wiretaps so they would know what happened to their children, and Zaev refused. And then he would, uh, after a while, he would uh, begin to uh, leverage the comments saying, well, it's not that uh, paradigm shifting, it's not that important, you know, to hear the wiretaps, they're not that important. But uh, he, he absolutely abused the wiretaps to rile up Albanian uh, support for him, saying that, you know, support Zaev, vote for me, and I will, uh, you know, uh, up uh, upend these unfair conviction of uh, falsely accused Islamists uh, working, you know, uh, Albanian Islamists. And uh, one of the requests in the Tirana platform you mentioned was that uh, there is a, uh, uh, this, this, this trial and the Kumanova terrorist attack in 2015 trial are uh, really litigated. Uh, this was one of the demands Albanian parties made to support Zaev. And sure enough, after the government was formed several months later, the, those who were, uh, the five people who were sentenced in Macedonia to life in prison, they, they are released under protective custody, which might mean as, uh, as, you know, as little as uh, just appearing before the court once a week, like for half an hour, to prove that you're still in the country, and then being completely free. Or they might be in house arrest. Uh, it's impossible to tell because they're definitely living in a heavily Albanian part of the country, and which is essentially a no-go zone. So the police could not even uh, check up on them. Wow! And and so Zayev is playing games with the families of five murder victims, and Pendorovsky is tone deaf or an ignorant bloody fool, yeah. and the answer is both. Uh, in in wanting April twelve to be recognized as a day of protests. Yeah. Um, I don't know who his advisors are, but they should be fired. Yeah, we were on the verge of a civil war again in uh, 2012 during this attack, and it was only due to a quick police reaction that the culprits were arrested and the public was assured that there will be justice. And now, you know, this is completely falling apart, and essentially, uh, you know, it gives a message to Macedonians that uh, 
Albanians will not be held responsible even for the most heinous uh, acts of murder and massacre. And uh, after Ahmeti, after uh, Smilkov's Quasar, after the Kumanov attack, after the Sazdo killing of a football fan in uh, the early months of Zaev's term in office. So basically Albanians can act with impunity. This morning there was a machine gun attack at the bank in a largely Albanian part of Skopje. They wounded the guard, they almost killed the, you know, reportedly they were shooting at the glass uh, window of the of the bank to... A robbery? Or uh, yeah, they, they, robbery. yeah, they robbed, they, they, uh, it's uh, the NLB bank, so they stole a bunch, a bunch oh, of right. money and they fled. fled. Clearly Albanian attackers, you know, this is, uh, uh, you know, there are no active Macedonian gangs of this kind. These are definitely former Uchaka Albanian guerrillas doing what they... You know, the only thing they, they can do, you know, waving machine guns and, well, and robbing people. Yes. Well, on, on actually, on that, that's interesting. The, 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 actually, three points real quick. And now we're moving away from the presidential elections. And I know we promised listeners that we would talk only about the presidential elections. But trust us, this all is it's all related. So to your point there uh, on the, the bank robbery or did they actually get away with the money or was it just? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. They got away with the money, burned the car, the, okay. all, all the good stuff. So so three points. Number one. It just in in just even a quick glance of the news in Macedonia over the past year two years, there seems to be many more robberies, uh, disappearance of individuals, uh, you know, more more uh, crime. Um, I don't know what the numbers are. I think we should look that up here in the near future to see if, you know these if these numbers are going up. I think they are. There's there's that. Um, number two, uh, that dovetails with, let's see, it's the Economist Intelligence Unit mm -hmm. uh, just put out their list of the world's most miserable countries, and Macedonia is number 15. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, only The only country in the region which is more miserable, if that helps, mm -hmm. is uh, Bosnia-Herzegovina, <laughs> number eight, misery loves company. Mm -hmm. uh, but that, that's, that's interesting, I, and I'd like to go back and compare that. And then the third point I wanted to make, uh, you're talking about how the, uh, you know, it, it seems, and it's true, that um, a, a lot of the Albanians seem to, to, to get away with stuff. And the number one case study in all of this, of course, is 2001, where Ali Ahmeti and uh, the leadership of the so-called NLA were pardoned for all of the crimes they committed. And Ali Ahmeti is responsible for the murder of hundreds of people mm -hmm. in Macedonia. And... Not only has he not been never been charged, but he's in a power in a position of power, and today he's threatening President Ivanov for even thinking about no, no. giving pardons uh, at the end of his term, which will be in a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, so we we know that the president uh, has the power of pardon. We know that Ali, uh, sorry, Zoran Zaev himself was pardoned by Branko Sevankovsky no, no. many years ago, uh, and Ali Ahmeti received de facto pardons from the government of Macedonia, from the international community, from everybody. And yet he has the audacity to threaten President Ivanov for exercising his constitutional role as commander-in-chief and president of the Republic of Macedonia to issue pardons. And it just go, and you know and it and it just continues. Mm -hmm. And and people wonder why there is you know and, and fortunately there's not a whole a great deal of, of ethnic tension, but there is ethnic tension in Macedonia. Because it seems that one side is treated differently than the other side. And in this case, with what we're talking about, Macedonia's minority Albanians seem to literally get away with murder. Yeah. Uh, if you give a get-out-of-jail-free card to an entire ethnic community because their votes are so valuable and important to the government, inevitably you encourage more bad behavior like the bank robbery today, like beatings and killings, like forced... Uh, you know, there is obviously Macedonian flight out of... Uh, majority Albanian districts because of the overall uh, way in which, you know, life functions in these parts. It's no, it's no picnic for Albanians either. They're also targets of uh, uh, racketeering yes. and murder, etc. But uh, obviously when it comes from your own, it's one level of uh, endangerment than when it comes from another ethnic group which is targeting you because of your ethnicity and religion. And... Uh, uh, no, this is going to continue to get worse and worse. Well, yeah, and I think it's worth saying that, you know, obviously the majority of Macedonia's uh, minority Albanians are decent, good, hardworking people. They just want to, you know, 
make a living, earn earn money, take care of their kids, put their kids through school, take a vacation a couple times a year, something like that. Uh, and yet their leadership is the one that looks down on them and says, basically, what the, 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 the leadership of Macedonia's uh, Albanians looks down on their own constituents and says, you're too stupid. We're, you know, vote for us. We're going to be in power to give you stuff, mm -hmm. uh, which is a, which is a very condescending attitude. But yeah, but sadly, they, they vote for their commanders now. in Kosovo yeah. and in Macedonia. They keep voting for the militant wings. They never vote for uh, yeah. anything else. Yeah, that's true. Well, uh, maybe that's just human nature. Mm. Uh, and it will be interesting to see how, even though that Dewey and Sirisim are in a uh, loose coalition for Stevo Pandorovsky, it will be interesting to see uh, how the, the vote breaks amongst the Albanians. And we'll have our first... Uh, um, news on that uh, late on the 21st on, during the first round. Yeah, it will be. It's we're, we're close. We're uh, it's uh, put up and or shut up time. We have the polls in which yep. Pendarovsky is uh, in a slight lead ahead of Siljanovska, with a large uh, num percentage of people uh, who would not uh, declare themselves. Uh, you know, who would say I'm voting, but they would not declare themselves. I'm voting for this or that candidate. This number almost they're undecided. Yeah, they're, they're all this number or, or scared to declare themselves, which is, you know, a code word for opposition yeah, sure. supporters, and, and uh, uh, yep, the, the, their the number, number almost uh, equals the number of uh, Siljanovska or Pendarovsky, who are you know pretty close. Um, so th there is definitely a, a lot of likely voters who can swing the election this way or the other. Uh, Sidanov's case, Taylor made as a former colored revolution activist at the start of the revolution and, uh, you know, critic of the Gruevsky government. She's tailor made not to offend SDSM supporters, not to, you know, encourage uh, a large turnout in SDSM against her. So if Vemura ran a proper Vemura candidate, they would have energized the SDSM base. Sidanov's case, genetically engineered not to encourage the SDSM base, so we could expect a lot of uh, uh, disappointed, dejected uh, colored revolution supporters to sit this one out. And, you know, some of the Vimero ads are actually directly targeting these people. You would, they would show like a few uh, youths covered with paint and looking uh, disappointed around the table and saying, well, we protested, but it was for nothing, you know, they, these, our, our side, you know, lied to us or something. So this, uh, on the other hand, this is harmful because it could depress Vomera turnout for Siljanovska and she faces a, uh, a boycott initiative from the right to Vomera uh, of people who, who believe that even participating in this election would uh, legitimize the name in some, uh, you know, the name change in some way. Some of them right. are clearly, you know, paid for and uh, orchestrated some of these activists, uh, but many of them are legitimate and uh, uh, Vomero leader Christian Mitskovsky to, today appealed to them, telling them that we are on the same side, we uh, hold the same, yes. same ideal. He distinguished those of you who are sincerely boycotting, not, you know, he implied not those of you who are paid to to spread a boycott campaign in <laughs> yeah. order to undermine the Vimero vote and help Pendarovsky get elected. Uh, so basically, uh, you know, Vimero's approach by picking Sedanovska has its, uh, you know, advantages, but also its downsides, and we'll see on Sunday how it works. And she's running away with it among ethnic Macedonians uh, uh, when, uh, uh, you know, against Pendarovsky, she has an overwhelming support among ethnic Macedonians, which brings us to the major defect of the Prespa Treaty. It's a treaty imposed on a country and specifically on a nation, on the ethnic nation, ethnicity, the majority ethnicity of a country, against its will. Because obviously the candidate who opposes the Prespa Treaty is, um, you know, could be defeated in the elections by the minority of the majority people and Albanians, you know, an ethnic minority stuck stacked on the on on the on the way and uh, and you know that's a recipe for disaster obviously right well I, actually i want to just go back and say one thing about gordana because since you mentioned that early on in the uh in the uh so-called colorful revolution she was supporting it but she saw the light 
And as principal, and you know, we tell people that the Macedonian Content Farmers podcast is the first, it's a niche podcast, it's in English, and it's talking about Macedonia from a conservative worldview. And as conservatives, Svetin, we do believe in the power of grace mm. and forgiveness. And, uh, you know, Gordana saw the light, so to speak. And so she supported them originally, but then she came around and saw what a danger that was to, not to Gorevsky and, and the gov former government, but what a danger it was to Macedonia. And that is being played out now. And I have to mention that, uh, and we will invoke the name of St. Ronald. Mm. Okay. Ronald Reagan, yeah, of funny. course, was a hardcore Democrat. Yep. And then became saw the light, changed his, and, and, and it, was, it was an issue of, of facts and, and seeing the world as it really is that, that brought him over to the Republican side, one of the greatest Republican presidents that the United States of America has ever produced. Uh, but he started out as a Democrat, and so I think that's a message of hope. Yeah, it will, uh, it will take some work on her part to, uh, you know, w win over and uh, justify the investment and the expectations of uh, of all Macedonians and especially of conservative, decent, uh, Vimmer Macedonians uh, who still uh, value their roots and their history and their tradition. And otherwise, you know, it, it, it's game over. If it doesn't work, uh, it's, it's game over for the country because, you know, we're in the Balkans. Um, you know, nature abhors a vacuum everywhere, especially here. So if we keep on giving up on our national interests will be steamrolled by by all the neighboring countries we're just encouraging them to to stick a knife in us and uh, and that would be it. well and that's that's what i that's what i wrote in my most recent column uh that you know a dilution of macedonia's identity uh invites instability not only in macedonia but regionally uh, yeah. and it's a recipe for disaster not just for macedonia but for the whole region um all right well Elections are on Sunday, the 21st. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we have uh, pretty much discussed everything there is to discuss. Well, there's a lot more to discuss, but for now, I think we've got it. We've covered it quite well. Um, why don't we take a quick break and then come back with our farmer's picks? Welcome back to the Macedonian Content Farmers Podcast. Jason and Svetin talking about all things Macedonia. In this case, the presidential elections, first round April 21. But right now it's time for farmers' picks. Svetin, what have you got? Okay, I'm going to go with uh, a bit of culture here. And again, politics heavily in interwoven okay. in, the, in the cultural part. Uh, there is, uh, uh, it's pretty popular, growing in popularity. There is like a TV show here, uh, which uh, it's called Prispav. Uh, it's it's a ripoff on uh, Faulty Towers. Even you know the, the main character even looks like Basil Faulty, uh, and it's uh, it's about a small uh, uh, hotel in uh, along Lake Prespa. Therefore, the name Prespaf. And I think it started uh, airing long before the Prespa Treaty. I mean, it definitely started airing before the Prespa Treaty. So maybe they had foreknowledge that uh, the the treasonous act will be signed. Uh, on Lake Prespa, either way, you know, the, the name works for them. Now Now that Prespa, the Prespa Treaty is the most often repeated uh, uh, document in uh, our history after the Bucharest Treaty and then after the Ohrid Treaty. Oh, yeah. so it's a, an EU-funded project, so basically we do not have independent uh, uh, TV development in this country, separate from the vast operation of... Uh, Brain, brainwashing operation which was put in place uh, to get us to Prespa. <laughs> it, uh, it was given to a, a talented director, I must admit, but a person who comes uh, so far from the left, you know, his father is one of the main supporters of, uh, uh, of, the, of, the, um, of SDSM. He was spokesman for um, Branko Cervinkovsky, for President Cervinkovsky. Both father and son were involved in one of the major corruption scandals of uh, Tsarenkovsky's era when he was found to be giving uh, money directly, uh, literally half of the uh, 
of the budget of the office of the president to the company founded by the son of his PR guy and the money were then, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, rolled over in the, in the SDSM party. Uh, so these were obviously people who the European Union would elect to, to give them to, uh, funding to uh, implement their uh, PR uh, project. And, but of course. and we have, uh, if you look at the characters, there is one Macedonian, uh, you know, an actor in the, in the show, uh, Vlado Jovanovsky, who was then tried and almost sentenced, uh, you know, pardoned eventually. Oh, right. For the April 2017 incident in the parliament, he was tried as a terrorist, and he's the Macedonian guy who would, uh, you know, tap the brakes from time to time when, uh, you know, the brothers are trying to sell the hotel to Greeks, or at one point try to rename the hotel in a in homage of the name issue, and he would tell them, no, there is tradition, there is value in this, there is family in this, etc. But then he's also portrayed as a drunkard was removed from the show because, you know, he was put in prison. Uh, and then the other brothers, you know, one of them, obviously, there is the homosexual, um, who has a foreign homosexual lover. There is a, a girl of loose morals. There are several Albanians who, who handle all the money in the show and who are the cultured and worldly people, while the Macedonians are drunkards or homosexuals in the show or, you know, un, uh, you know helpless romantics, etc. Um, and there is, of course, a lot of it uh, was was conceived in the Vimera times, and there are there is uh, visibly candidates, uh, you know, uh, characters meant to present represent government corruption, focused in Vimera. The episodes would respond to some incident which uh, SDSM would raise as a casus belli against Vimera. But obviously, now that their party is in power, they're losing much of their edge. So I'm I'm curious to see how they will develop and. Uh, if they will be allowed to criticize the Zayev government, and obviously, you know, spo spoiler, uh, spoiler alert, they will not be allowed to. Yes. Well, I don't think we'll put a link to that one. Yeah, it's, it's maybe it's the catchy <laughs> tune they have. <laughs> uh, well, I'll tell you what, Sven, I want to, I, I, I like uh, ending this podcast with something positive, um, and uh, I've been focusing for the last number of podcasts on tourism because the Macedonia just has so much for, to offer. And I do think we should do a separate total tourism podcast since we're getting close to, uh, well, we're in mm -hmm. mid spring now, you know, summer's on the way and people are thinking about traveling for the, for the summer. Let's do a special podcast just on tourism. But my farmer's pick is another one of these blogs that uh, random citizens mm -hmm. do. Uh, this one is called David's been here. <laughs> Uh, this guy started traveling in 2008, and it's, this is 10 places you must visit in Macedonia. Obviously, he starts with Skopje. He says, Skopje is Macedonia's capital city and cultural hub, a stopover point that merits a minimum of a couple of days. Here, you'll get a taste of how the country has embraced a modern European way of life mm -hmm. while still paying tribute to its ancient mm -hmm. past. Uh, and so, of course, he goes through Skopje, Matka, uh, Mavrovo. It's the highlights, uh, Jovan Begorski. Uh, Okrid, of course, uh, Svetinaum, Bitula, Herklea, Stobi, and then, of course, the wineries. Um, so it's always fun to see how uh, people from around the world, what they what they go and see. A lot of it's the same places, but every now and then you'll find something different. Uh, but it's just nice to see, you know, people from around the world mm. coming to Macedonia, falling in love with Macedonia, and then taking the time to write about it, blog it, uh, you know, uh, do the pictures, maybe some videos, things like that. So we'll put that up in the show notes. Ten places you must visit in Macedonia at davidsbenhere.com. Um, and I don't even know who David is. I guess I'll figure that out after this podcast. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to have a, a normal, regular visitor. And not uh, uh, Because at this point, we basically presume all foreigners, especially coming from the West, to be spies of some kind. <laughs> and often with good reason. <laughs> yeah, that's true. All right. Well, it's. I think we 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 uh, will wrap this up. I actually have to go to work since we're doing this early morning my time, late afternoon your time. Yeah, amazingly, the podcast um, doesn't pay enough to uh, to have it as our as yeah, our day that's job. Yeah, true. Yeah. No, well, we both have day jobs. <laughs> uh, so, um, we will be back next week. Maybe maybe we'll uh, drop next week's podcast on the twenty second or twenty third day or two after the elections to so that we can. Uh, do more rank punditry about the results. Yeah, we could. We could and, have uh, it. I'm looking forward to. We could have it right Sorry. after the elections, I suppose. 
Yeah. No, let's do that. Sven, always good talking to you. You too, buddy. Take care. All right. Take care. Dobre dojde Kostal. Dobre dojde Ula Kajte. Hallo, of de Frau Ula Brinkman Buzeleska. Dobre došla. Ja sam Gazda. Potrošio jedan od Gazda. Milena Telefa. God, postela od Rusi. Se nadeva mene nešto bocne. Kosta! Idiot! Jelena? Kosta? Pa ja sam od Skopje, od Dračevo. Od srce toma Skopje. Guten tag. Ja sam Mario, šef kuhinje. Kje, može za denes da mi donesete nekoliko porci tavče gravče? A vi jeste? Inspektor Tome. Ko je njegova rabota? Njegova rabota je kazni da piši. Kako se veli to, inspektor? Si ti zadivan obrut. Ja sam partner u pansionu. Už jeden partner? Dobar den, pansion Prespov, ja sam taljat. Koji si ve pa ti? Ja sam ovde glaven. Ti mi taljat si jedinstvenata svetla točka v ovoj pansion. Te mi reče ne baraj me. More, more, more. Trojca braća, jeden obavezno pedar se padja. Nema da imam familija, nema da imam deca zato što sam gej. Izvinete, nemam nekoliko da slobodno se ovdje. Za Makedonija! Se prepravaš da ga si so Jelena ili Ivoneza se zaljubi? Čak sam mu rekao da je među nama gotovi i da me nikad više ne traži. Mile, što pravi ti? A ti li si pile? Jasna vas, kanam u moj hotel. Hotel Nova Evropa. A odakle hotel od Nova Evropa? Site ki si odite, ja? I ti, Toni, i Mile, i Jelena, site! Pa ula! Dojde vreme i da se razdelime. Kje je to me? Saj kako bi tvoj del? Kraja da je moji majko. I kaj će sad biti s prespavom? Ja ću da kupim prespav. Prodaj će se, jel? Svi te tri dela. Naši od pansion će vi ponudi odmor za pametanje. Prespav nikogaš nema da bide normalen pansion zaradi nas. Zato što nije nesme normalna familija.